Okay, so I've set up the Drobo. So I basically plugged it into my Apple time capsule. If you look back there, it just goes right into one of those three slots, that black plug, right from the Drobo. So it's getting the, the internet directly from the ethernet cable. And then it just really has a plug. I have, um, you can see two drives in the green, so that's good to go. And then down here, you have these, I guess, 10 blue buttons. So it's kind of like, I guess as you use space, you get more and more blue buttons. So right now I'm only on the first one because I don't have that much on the Drobo right now. Uh, if you listen to it, like you could hear, it's a little, you could hear a fan going in the background. Now granted, this is on, you know, like my home theater, um, you know, like, table here so I'm, I'm gonna probably pick up some kind of a piece of furniture or a shelf or something to put that on but for now I just put it there to set it up so let me show you how to, to do this in um, the Drobo dashboard let me show you that now okay so once you install the actual physical Drobo you have to go to a computer and download the Drobo dashboard so let me just fire that up right now and I'll show you what this is all about this loads up the Drobo dashboard, and this will actually, it's right now looking for my connected Drobo. It does take about a minute or so to find it. And this is any, you know, you could have five Drobos on your network, and it'll show you the five of them here. So here I have the one, the 5N, and it's currently unlocked because I'm logged in. You could require a login or not, and green is status is good. So that's the health. Uh, so now if I go and click on it, double click, I should say, I'm literally get all the information about the Drobo. So you see all these things have come to life now. So here's the status, so here's the name, they give you a serial number, the health is good, here's the current firmware. I literally just uploaded the new firmware, so that had to reboot the Drobo, so it's only been up for about 14 minutes. Before that it was up for a, you know, a good week or so. Hot sync cache is on, an active interface, it's connected by ethernet cable. Over here you can see the drives I have. I have currently two 8 terabyte hard drives. And down here I have the MSATA drive. It's like an accelerator. It's a 64 gigabyte. It's like, it acts as like cache memory. So it just helps speed things up. The next one down is ca capacity. And now basically out of those two 8 terabyte drives, I have capacity for data of 7.16 terabytes, of which I used 386 gigabytes so far, or about 5%. So, you know, you might be asking, like, what happened to the, the other 8 gigabytes? So if you come over here to the Usage tab, you can see I have 8 plus 8 equals 16, but in actual terms, it's 14.55. And then this orange color is used for protection. So it uses 7.38 terabytes for protection, which only leaves me 7.13 terabytes available for data. So that's the thing. I mean, it, it gives you that redundant backup. And I think if you have more than two drives, you could have dual redundancy. So I could have literally three drives of 24 terabytes, and it would back up my data twice. So I could literally lose two data, uh, two drives, but that might be a bit of overkill. So here, if a drive crashes, I could literally pull it out and pop a new drive in, and it'll rebuild the drive. So that, that's the goal here. Um, now we get down to, like, how do I put data into the Drobo? Like, how do I organize the data? And Drobo uses this uh, concept called shares. So if I click on shares, right now I only have really, I've made one share. And I guess this public one probably comes as a default share. But what a share is, if you think about it, like you have a network, like let's just say at work, you know, there's a, you know, a P drive and that's the network drive, you know, and then there's different folders on that drive. So the IT or you, you might be, have the ability to go in and grant access to that drive, that folder. So that's like the way I would think about what a share is. So right now I have a share called video. So I can kind of click this or I go to share settings and I can click on this and I can see the admin has access to read and write and everybody else has read access to that. So you see one user read write, everyone has read only access and you could change and edit that. The other thing you could do is actually add shares here. So if I want to add a share, like let's just say I want a backup file or for, you know, let's just say pictures. So I could add a share and I could just call it like whatever I want. So I just say pictures and I could say okay. And then literally I could say everyone has read access memory or, you know, guests don't look at it or everybody can read and write. 
you know, so really it's kind of like that. Like I say, all users can read, but not guests. Or everybody can can um, read. So that's fine. I mean, I don't mind if people see it because the only people in this house is, is pretty much my family. So that should be okay. But, you know, you would cater that to however you'd need to see it. So I could say okay. And it's actually creating that share. So this one should pop up in a second. And there you go. So now I have a picture share. It's alphabetical order. The other thing that Drobo has is Drobo apps. And so this is a bunch of different categories of apps. I'm using this primarily for a Plex server. So if I go into the entertainment apps, you can see some different things. And there's Plex. So Plex is running. So I've, I've downloaded and installed Plex. So let's just say you want to install an app. You would just kind of click on it. Like, I don't really know what this Firefly is, but I would literally click that. It would go and download it, install it onto the network, and then you'd be able to use that app. So I'm not going to do that now because I don't know what that one is, but you know, there's a bunch of different apps to use, and they're constantly adding new apps all the time. Um, there's also tools. So, you know, you could have right here, if you want to shut down the Drobo, you go in and shut it down, or you could reboot it. Um, you know, reboot, reset, and you could check for updates, things like that. And there's settings. So you have network settings, general settings, admin settings. I'm not going to bore you with all the settings, but you kind of get the gist. So that's kind of how the Drobo works. I mean, it's sort of like you set it up on the internet, and this is the Drobo 5N. So this is on my network. So I have an Ethernet cable right from the router that goes into this. If you had the Drobo 5D, that would plug in with a USB 3 right into your computer. So only one computer would be able to see it. Now, anything, anybody on my network, any device, like um, when we get into the Plex app, I'll show you, you know, we have that on the, on Roku, you have that on the, the iOS devices, you know, it's, it's available for anything that's connected to the network. So that's why I went with the 5N. And the way you get this onto, like files onto the Drobo is you would just go into the, say, Windows Explorer or, um, you know, Finder on the Mac and just go into, instead of going to like your local computer C drive or something like that, you go down to network and you would see the Drobo, in my case, 5N would be listed there. So whatever you call your Drobo, you'd see it there. And then you could just drag and drop files there, um, you know, copy, paste things. Or, and which does take a little while because my laptop is connected wirelessly. So I think a faster way to do it is actually to plug an Ethernet cable directly from my laptop into the router so that is directly connected. I haven't tried that yet, but I think that's the way. If you're going to move a lot of data, that would be the way to go. But that's it. Just like any other fo folder, you know, that's what these shares are. So, you know, I have a, a video folder, a pictures folder, whatever you want, a backup folder, whatever you want to call it. And then that information goes onto the Drobo, gets redundantly backed up, and it should be accessible to anywhere on the network. So in the next video, I'm going to show you the process that I go through to actually get the movies off of the DVDs and Blu-rays so I could actually, you know, load them into the Drobo and you could watch them in the Plex server. So that's um, coming next. All right. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll talk to you soon.